Vice Chair. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a specially <laughs> scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Select Board of awesome until the governor signs the bill. Then it'll just be the select board. We have a single agenda item tonight. It's a second interview with uh, Sarah LaValle. Uh, we have a number of questions, two sides, and font that we can actually read, which is really important. Got to, got to have that. And uh, Sarah, our process is uh, the second interview. We've interviewed one candidate uh, last Friday. We have another candidate on Thursday of this week some internal deliberation and uh, it's on our agenda for monday we have a regularly scheduled meeting uh, to talk about uh, how our process has unfolded we're going to go <laughs> through some of our questions uh, hopefully uh, at our monday meeting uh, just to close that out hopefully at our monday meeting uh, we'll be making some decision about extending an offer so that gives you kind of a timeline okay um, that said Thanks for coming back. We really do appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Okay, who wants to start? Um, I will. Um, Sarah, we, we, one thing is we want you to feel comfortable. Um, we want, I mean, it's a tough, we understand it's a very difficult atmosphere in, in the interview to begin with. Now you're sitting with three of us. Um, but please be comfortable with us. Um, if, if we ask you a question and you want to think for a moment, that's fine. Okay. If you want to take a break, that's fine. Um, if uh, you have a question for us in the middle of the thing, that's fine also. So we just want to get to know you a little. All right. All right. Sounds good. So, Sarah, in what type of work environment do you thrive? Uh, what do you want to thrive in? Um, I've been micromanaged before. I definitely do not like to be micromanaged. Um, I, I like to set my own goals for the, the day and the week with it with the input and assistance of, of the select board and anything else that may be going on in town. Um, definitely always an open door policy, but I, I do like things fairly quiet. Um, I guess that's it. I'm pretty flexible. I'm I don't have there's there's no environment I think in, in which I absolutely couldn't work. I, I can adapt. Thank you, Sierra. You want to go, David? Or? Right. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Um, uh, can you describe your management style? Like, what, what, what we, if you had to encompass that, what would it be? Um, I, I think I would start out by managing um, mostly the way that I prefer to be managed. Mm -hmm. So set overall goals, um, check in with people. Um, some people do like to have a little more communication yep. going back and forth than, than others do. So I, I would try and adapt to people's different learning styles and um, how, how they would like to be managed. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. <clears throat> uh, Sarah, you'll be starting the, uh, whoever it is, you're starting a position, uh, the, the, probably the late spring section of our budget process. Letters have been sent out, department heads have done their homework, it's time to begin the compilation. Uh, can you take us through what that process, the next stages go through? You work in, you, you, your experience is in city government, right? So it's a yes. little bit different than, but you're a, Shelburne, so ATMs. Yeah, and, anyway. I, and I've worked in towns. So okay, got it. So overall. what's the process look like? The folks have got their budget letters. It's time to begin compiling and headed to annual town meeting. And ours is late. April. Okay. Um, I mean, it's critical to make all of those timelines, as, as you all know. Um, I'm sure department heads are, are well aware of that, but I would definitely want to uh, keep them apprised of deadlines and how important it is to get things in on time so that we can have things ready for town meeting. Um, I don't know exactly what the process is here, but definitely uh, communicating with the, the board and department heads and the town attorney to the extent that that's done before the town meeting to get the warrant out and, and make sure that everything's all, all set and ready to go. You don't spend too much money on them at correcting. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and editing. You gotta edit before you, before you send it to the staff. Exactly. Right. <laughs> Great, thanks so much, Sarah. Sarah, how do you evaluate, how, you do, how do you evaluate people for promotion, um, adding, additional responsibility and if you could give an example of that 
Sure. Um, unfortunately, some of the, the best workers do not make good managers, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, it, just because someone has been doing an, an exemplary job at the job that they've at the task that they've been giving given doesn't necessarily mean that they would be interested in or even would want a promotion with additional responsibilities. Um, but some people are, are really hungry for additional things to do, even th though they might not have the qualifications that somebody a little more senior might. Um, so you're just keeping out an eye out for uh, whatever is needed at, at the next level. So make sure that you're, you're getting the right people up there to, to get the job done. Sure. Can uh, uh, to expand a little bit, how, what's the difference, be in your opinion, is the difference between a manager and a supervisor? Uh, so a, a manager is, is more um, involved in, in goal setting and, and moving the, the goals of a, of a department and the, and the community along. A, a supervisor is, is more task oriented, like keeping people on task and, and making sure that they're, they're doing what they're doing. So um, DPW is a, is a good example of that, where there's a lot of laborers and um, people who need more direct supervision because they're dealing with, in, with uh, heavy equipment and potentially dangerous circumstances. But, a, a, but a, an overall manager is, is someone in, more involved in, in goal setting and, and bigger picture stuff. Thank you, sir. And sort of like a follow-up on that, how would you um, mentor employees and just kind of give an example of like how you'd mentor somebody from a management standpoint? Uh, it, I think it's important to check in with employees on a regular basis. I, how regular would depend on, on the situation and the person, but you know, making sure that even if someone is doing a really great job, that you're still checking in with them and doing some goal setting. Um, I don't know if Sunderland does uh, yearly performance evaluations, but that's something that, that's always a, a great um, conversation starter, even though some people are sort of scared of it, like, no, I don't, I don't want to evaluate myself and think about my, my bigger role, but it's, I think it's, that's an important thing to get done. Okay. Thanks. I get the easy question. What's the <laughs> biggest decision you've made in the past year, and why was it so big? Uh, on a on a professional. We'll keep scale, it the professional. I yeah. yeah. <laughs> I <would assume laughs> that. Um, I had probably a decision to to branch out uh, the roles of, of one particular committee that I deal with into something a little bit more major. They'd, they'd been more focused on, on one track and, you know, let's step back and, and look at um, how you fit into the city and, and what other ideas we can do and how can, how, can we re, how can we deal with other departments to move those goals along and I think that's been really beneficial both for the committee and for the city as a whole. Interesting. So it was a committee with a, with a charge, kind yes. of a focus. Yep. And then you, you took that and, or what was the mechanism for coming to the decision? Right, we want to broaden it was, our focus. How did it basically come Basically it was, well, here's a hole. No, there isn't currently anyone in the city who's, who's working with this. You know, this, our mission is broad enough so that this is something that, that we could do. Is this something that we're interested in? And it, and it was, and I think it's worked out really well. Could I ask a follow-up? How, mm -hmm. how was it received? Um, a little bit of skepticism at first, like, whoa, that's, you know, that's sort of different than, than what we've done in the past, but, right. um, there's been a lot of success and real action and implementation that's occurred since then. So I now it's, it's sort of like, well, that's part of our charge. Let's keep doing it. Good for you. Okay. Great, thanks. We 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 have proceduralized a lot of things. Um, sometimes I think in in government um, we end up doing things very bureaucratically because we things have to get done and usually things are on a time so we think we do a either a paternalistic and or bureaucratic type of method works that being said um, we also look for change 
just doing it the same way all over and over again is not necessarily the best way. And I think we all agree on that. So that's good. And we sort of, I, and I find myself doing it too, but I, I try not to. Um, you know, there, in, in government, there are boards and there are different roles, and we sort of get used to fill, fitting in those specific um, areas. And there's no reason why we, we can't broaden that a little bit and look at things that are different. Uh, so when I find myself saying, well, we can't do that because we've always done it that way, I'm like, well, let's step back and maybe maybe we can. Sure. Don't say we can't. Do you ever feel people get, um, they get, they get put in a square peg hole and that's where they stay? Not, maybe not by choice, but that um, people around them. How do you get that person out of that? The, the pigeonhole effect. That pigeonhole. Mm. Or how, how, how do you draw someone out of that? Yeah, um, I mean, it, it's in some ways it's it's easier in a small town because there's so many different things that need to be done and, and so few people to do those things. Well, so putting together furniture. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, I mean, so, sometimes you're a board of selectmen and sometimes you have to put stuff together. Um, yep. But you know, if some if someone has been doing the same task for years and they they just feel that they need to, but they re, they're really not passionate about it. But maybe there's something else that's semi-related to what they're doing that would be a better fit for them you know let's let's try and do that and maybe there's someone else who would who's more passionate about this thing that you don't really like that much than and you can shift things around you know, there's there's enough exciting tasks for everybody to do you just have to find the ones that people find exciting Sarah what has prepared you for your future as Sunderland T town administrator and more importantly, how have you prepared yourself? Uh, I, I've had a lot of different experience at different levels of government. I've been a board member, um, you know, elected board member, appointed committee member. I've worked in small towns and, and larger cities. Um, I'm missing a, a really big city experience, but I'm, that's not something I, I'm really striving for. It's something I think I would be interested in. Uh, so I've gained a different experience on different sides of the table and in different environments. Um, and I've also tried to keep myself just really up to date on things that are going on in the state. Um, I subscribe to the Department of Revenue lists and I, I do actually read that information. Although that's not what I'm really passionate about, it. it's really important to keep involved, involved and aware. Uh, and I, even though I already had a master's degree, I, I did take the uh, Suffolk and MMA program just to, mm -hmm. to talk to like-minded people and keep abreast of what's going on out there. It's important not to be stagnant. Things are constantly changing. It's true. Thank you. <clears throat> um, what would be your strategies for addressing areas that you consider challenges if, uh, if you were hired? And it might be a little difficult to answer that without a specific um, Challenge, but maybe think of something that you think of as a challenge, and you know, might or you might consider a challenge. Yeah, um, <clears throat> and I, I guess broadly, I would rely on on the people who are already here and who are, already have experience with these issues, and take those as building blocks. Um, I'm, no one in a community knows everything. It's, it's important to speak to everyone and and be aware of the things that you don't know and try to fill those gaps. Thank you. Here comes the steam. <laughs> Here it comes. Yep. Right. So, uh, Sarah, looking back, what could you have done to make a bad workplace relationship better? And has that relationship changed your previous strategy? I think in, in a very broad sense. Yeah, I'm, I think the, the most challenging relationships I think I've had are, are when you get off on the, the just the wrong foot with someone on either on a contentious issue or you you meet them on a bad day where there's something is terrible going on um, and you sort of use that to, to color your opinion of them and, and of their work um, but I it, I've learned it's really important to to go back and, and try and get things off on a, a better footing mm. I appreciate that Sarah, please discuss with us about a time when you had a major project or an objective with a very tight time constraint and limited resources 
How did you overcome the challenges to achieve the necessary outcome? Uh, I think a good example of that is, is any grant application that's ever due and then the, uh, the associated reporting that, that comes from those grants. Because sometimes it's like, oh, we got this money, we're all set. Like, oh, there's, there's so much work to do now. Uh, <laughs> Here's your follow-up line. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, so yeah, I, sometimes you just have to buckle down and get it done um, and use the resources that are available to the extent possible, but sometimes you're working up, up until the last minute to get things done, and that, that's okay, and as late nights are, are, are nothing new. Okay. <clears throat> um, Describe for us like a previous experience, um, like interacting or managing a, a sort of a, like a, a committee might be a good example, like a diverse community volunteer group that had a slightly divergent agenda. <laughs> and, um, and what kind of, how did you go about gaining consensus so they can move forward? Uh, sometimes it's, <coughs> it's a real challenge. And sometimes it, it isn't possible. Um, <clears throat> Especially with permit granting boards, where people com are coming in with biases, you know, you, mm -hmm. you you present the you present the board with the facts. You you tell them how um, it, how, in your opinion, um, it, a project or initiative does or, or doesn't meet the goals of the community and applicable laws. And you know, sometimes a few people will say, "Oh, you know, I I didn't think of it that way. This is really important. Um, I'm I'm glad I had this perspective that's broader than my own personal bias." But Sometimes you, you can't overcome that, and hopefully you're, you've presented the, uh, the board with enough information to be able to make the right decision, but it, it doesn't always happen. That's true. Thanks. <clears throat> Perfect and late on a project, or thorough and on time? Uh, I guess it would depend on the. That's an ad lib, by the way. So it's one I just on did, the yeah. specific project. Um, you know, if it's if it's a grant report, if it's you know, if it's an application or something like that, it, it's definitely better to be thorough and on time. Um, although state grant requirements sometimes seem especially strict, and, and there's no way to come back and look at this. It's, they they really would narrow. they would much rather have something in hand, and have an opportunity to ask questions later. Um, but you know, if it's a, a building project or a construction project, it, it, it has to be perfect. Great, great, thanks. I saved the last one for you, Tom. Awesome. <laughs> I, Sarah, what, what do you envision your first week, month, year would be like as a town administrator? What do you think is, would be some of your biggest challenges in, in and how would you work through those? And the, the first weeks and, and months, I would definitely want to meet with department heads and people within the community, just to have them get to know them, have them get to know me, um, talk to the, the select board and learn what priorities are, what, what are the biggest challenges and, uh, and issues facing the community, what, you know, what do we need to work on first, what are your priorities, um, and then just, just dealing with that. and then. And of course, to filling in with all the day-to-day -day issues as we go along. There's just because I'm new doesn't mean that things don't need to get done immediately. What, and what would you need from the select board? What would you be looking for from? Them? Um, I mean, it's since it's not a town manager position, it is a town administrator. I would be looking for guidance on um, the needs of the of the community and and what your priorities are. Um, I'm not, I. I will not tell the select board what to do. I will wait for, for you to give me direction. Um, You'd be the first. <laughs> <laughs> I, and then, you know, we can work from there and, and figure that out. <laughs> um, I, my management style with, with, the, with the town administrator position that isn't a town manager is to, to take direction from the community. And I think that's a really important distinction. Thank you, sir. Um, in, in your professional life, what's given you the most satisfaction overall? It can be a specific example or just of a broader scope. 
Uh, I, th I think it's seeing a project through to completion, no matter how small it is. Um, you know, not everything gets to have a ribbon cutting, not everything is, is that fun and exciting, but sometimes you just get to close the, the book on a grant report and say, oh, we, we did this. Maybe nobody is really all that interested in, in the outcome of this, but you know, this was a really important thing for the community and needed to get done. Um, but sometimes it's, it's exciting. It's a ribbon cutting, it's a bike path, it's a, it's a new park. Right. Um, so completing anything that it affects the community in a positive way. Thanks. It's not always ribbon cutting. I agree with that. I would say, I would say from my personal experience, one of the most gratifying things is to get to the end of town meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Right? Because it's, it's a lot of work to get yeah. the warrant prepared and all the articles and, and then, you know, recognize that that work you know, is the catalyst for the future. So, mm -hmm. anyway, sorry. It's like, and it's a, it's a huge milestone. Yeah, I mean, right. It gets a little bit of press coverage in the paper, but it you know it represents the end of right. months and months of hard work. Or the beginning of or the beginning of changes in the way things are done. Yep. You know, it was you know, tell me that Joe's town administrator, former government, twenty five years, twenty years ago. No, we all no. What it is is we all know this is the question that they're going. Everybody's going to want to know the answer to. It. <laughs> it's this question. This one right here. Right. No, it's not. It's this. It's exactly right. Where did like, that come from? Right it's almost never what you think it is. <laughs> so, like, sometimes you anticipate it. You have pages written out. Well, like, all right, I'm true. all set to answer this question. That, that well, happens often. Yeah. Right. Right. And some other issue will suddenly grow up out of something. And sort of once we're done with one town meeting, then you're standing there looking up the mountain of the next one. <clears throat> and there's special town meetings. That's right. Those do pop up sometimes. Yep. I think that's the end of our official list, right? Now we're on to it's your turn. More questions. It's my turn. Yes, um, if you have any questions. As long as it's not involving furniture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <coughs> Near <Excuse> IKEA hardware. <clears throat> right. Um, I guess what, are, what, how does the board prefer to interact with, with the town administrator? And, Every board is different, and every community is different. But it, usually, there's a, a a sort of way that, that things have been done that's handed down from one board to the next. Well, this board likes to micromanage. <laughs> um, um, like to stop in during the day. <laughs> yeah, we'll pop in at lunch. How are you? Um, okay. We're driving by. <laughs> <laughs> Typically, historically, um, the the board is knowledgeable. Um, we're not afraid to ask questions. Um, when you talk about town meeting, we, I think all three of us probably ended up here because um, at some point we, we weren't happy with how we saw a town meeting move forward. So we believe it's important to have answers and we try to cover all those answers before we get to town meeting. Day to day, I would say the the town administrator. Um, we're looking for the town. We look towards the town administrator to to be our eyes and ears, um, and to um, have a good pulse because there's a number of people that visit the office daily, um, and so there's a there's a lot of information that comes back. I mean, the town administrator gathers information for us. Um, for instance, um, if something happens in town, we want the fire chief or police chief or highway superintendent or whomever to call the town administrator, not the chair, or members of the board individually. We like the uh, um, town administrator to probably going to know what kind of questions that we're going to ask, get as much information, then we want that department head or whomever to go back and do what they do best. And then the town administrator, we want the town administrator then to call three. And at that point, um, if we have additional questions, we let you know, and one call from you to that department head is made instead of three or four. Right. Okay. Like so you you we um, 
I think we look for the town administrator for for guidance um, to in the fact that we want to stay consistent with state statute and law. Mm -hmm. um, we trust the town clerk not to get us in jail during our election process. It's always important. Like, it's always been like, dicey, but she's pulled well, it off so far. Um, <laughs> we 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 want our town administrator to um, head be very be very aware of what our departments are doing. Again, not not micromanaging, but having you know monthly or weekly department head meetings so that everybody can understand what's happening. Um, we want to have our town administrator have exceptional um, relations with our the school department, the principal, Sunland Elementary, our superintendent. Um, so there's a, there's a wide um, exchange of ideas about how to get things done. Mm -hmm. We also we also want our town administrator to be involved with um, peers in our neighboring communities because we do do a lot of things together. Um, Sunland is part of a regional. A senior center. We have a regional elementary school and a union. We have a regional high school. We also have a shared EMS service, uh, South County EMS. Um, and pos it's possible that we may expand that. The, we're also part of, of FERCOG. Um, FERCOG is represents what the 26 towns and uh, cities and towns in Franklin County. Um, but you know the one, the interesting thing with the FERCOG is that they do as a planner. You understand there's a lot of things that they take and do that we on our own couldn't do. Right? And but they're they're there for it. So we want we want our town administrator to have a good relationship with Linda Dunlevy and and the the crew up there. We're also part of the uh, Franklin County Solid Waste uh, group. Um, Typically, our town administrators are PBTA representative. PBTA for Sunland is a small community, 3,500, but we have 90,000. Uh, we have over 90,000 riders. So when they look at ridership, which is how voting is allotted, we actually have a large, a lot, or large, relatively large say on the PBTA. So we like to, we like our town administrator to be involved with that as well. Um, Scott? Dave? I'd, I'd, I'd expand on what Tom had said. Is I always kind of picture the town administrator and, uh, being at, at, the, at the base of the funnel, right? So all the th information is kind of coming in, the correct, the uh, communications is going on, and it, it gets refined down to uh, the, the point where it's information that helps us as a member, us as a board, uh, make the best decisions. Um, and it's not to say that we won't be part of the the froth that's in the top of the funnel ourselves. But the reality is, uh, the professionals that we've had in the role have made uh, us a better selectmen because it allows us to make better decisions. And that's information. That's collaboration, as Tom said, with other bodies and agencies. And frankly, it's not my job. Right and people who who have it as their as their as their their bailiwick, they tend to want to do the best possible job at it. So um, you know, we're, the three of us are uh, uh, far from uh, saboteurs in the workplace, as can be as you can see by our turnover. It's not that high, like not at all, and. Um, that's the value that I think the town administrator brings to the board. How we interact with them, chair usually calls a couple times a week, sometimes during the budget season, as much as once a day. Stop. Mm -hmm. That's it. Uh, on occasion, you may see one of us roll into the office on occasion. Again, height of budget season, sure. But it's not going to be roll in, close the door, take an hour of your day up. It's yeah. never been that way. I've been here, I've been 17 Anyway, I, at, anyway, and it's not the case. It's just never been the case. Um, I think that's something that, um, if you talk to your predecessors individually, they would say. I would hope they would paint the same picture. 
we, we have a chairman. We have a chairman because we have to have a chairman. Right. Um, but we 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 understand that we're not like Connecticut that elects a first selectman. Right. That we're all elected equally. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, the what information you're conveying to one selectman, it's we it's conveyed to all of us. Yeah, with policy. As Paul, I mean that in in every email piece of paper that comes into our office is distributed to all of us and that was oh, yes. that's hard for some <laughs> that was hard well Sherry was hard it was hard yeah. because she wasn't used to that right right um, but that's what we demand um, we we have a very in that respect we're very open um, so if, it, if an email comes in addressed to Dave Pierce Tom and Scott did it and addressed to Scott it's shared with Everybody. Tom and Dave, and and that's how we do visit. For us, it's easy. Just like being on the TV, for us, is easy because we've mm -hmm. done it for a while. Right. Um, it's it's in in and I don't think we we don't. People say, well, well what if I say? And it's like, well, we probably sh you and we say it's like you sh probably shouldn't have said it. So we're pretty careful about that. We we do have a very active community. That's for sure. Um, um, and and you will you will get people visiting you, um, but it's okay if you shut your door once in a while. If you have to get work work done, we understand that as well. Yep. Um, I, I don't know. I, I think a, a, we we sometimes had a town administrator now for nineteen plus years, almost nineteen years. Um, so some of us still remember what it was like before we had a town administrator. Um, Is it better now, overall, than, than it was then? Yeah, I I, I think I think it's necessary. It's, too. We're, we're it, it's interesting, sir. We're members. We are pretty active, and 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 again, the the Franklin County Select Board Association, and um, we have some. Amazing conversations sometimes, yes. <laughs> and with other communities and, and select boards from other communities, and and about the roles of selectmen and town administrators and towns, and um, there was one town that was was talking about certain things, and and he says, well, well, how how how'd you do in the grants the last couple of years? And the guys like, well, grants, you're too small. We don't get no grants because we're all too small. And but I go, well, we almost got three million dollars. There you go. And <laughs> but and, and when you talk about it, it, why did we get the the three million dollars? Is because a we had a town administrator that was shepherding causes, right? Um, and we had active participation from many residents right. that helped. You know, and, and as a as a planner, you know, you know how, how 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 important it is to have an active conservation commission. You know, that that's not going to end you up in court every be some some. Yeah. And and they do a one they do a wonderful job. Our planning board um, has some people that have been there for a number of years that that understand the town. The zoning board, um, I I look at the the members of the zoning board planning and. It's it's amazing that we're we're able to hold on because they've gone through some lengthy, lengthy, um, hearings, but they do a good job. But the, a town administrator needs to reach out to them and to be available to them, um, and not and not um, not put up a wall. You know, and you said earlier about the open door. It is important. It's important that people are able to come in at any time, and and we want we want our government to be open, you know, and 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 you may come in here the first week and say we need to do this 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 and this and this, um, and and we say well why, and make your case and easy and we'll say go ahead and do it right. Of course we have to find the money, but. Um, how does the town administrator interact with volunteer and elected boards and commissions? I know it's a little bit different in, in every community. In, in some, they really hold on to their responsibilities and don't want any interaction from. Uh, I don't 
from the administrator, but, but in some other communities, especially where there's very few staff, they, they do rely on them a little bit more. Yeah, we tend to, because there's a very strong volunteer base here, and we're small, so we don't have, like, a, like Amherst, for instance, we don't have an IT department, you know, so <clears throat> it's really, I would I consider volunteer groups really just an integral part of, of because um, we've all been parts of one volunteer board or group or another before we even got on the select board. So uh, it's it's really kind of an integral part of the town and everything. So it's really no different than any other, like being be on the planning board or, or one of those. And for instance, the Conservation Commission is all um, volunteer. So we really rely on that. And there's a strong support base in the town, and people, which is good. I would say that the boards and committees um, uh, use the have used the town administrators services um, uh, with respect to the total town administrators responsibilities you know there's not there's not the there's not the board and committee that can be a particularly needy child and every every month there are certain specific projects that come up with timelines and of course the the reliance on the administrator as being one of the clearing houses for information or uh, a, a coupling to other acting as a coupling to other uh, agencies you know it certainly happens but that has ebbs and flows uh, i would say of the, the list of the big committees the reliance on the town administrator is, is basically one of of professional professional assistance and, and that's that's what the extent of it okay. we've got some pretty independent bodies out there yeah. and but they're independent and and uh, and sharp right right you're not you're not going to get the town administrator deeply involved in a, a, a zba you know ruling it's not going to happen this is sort of happen. right but it could if there's needs to be a, a coupling there's going to be something that happens from the from the action required the town administrator can deliver that information or act as a facilitator, um, but that's that's kind of the way I, I've experienced it in the last decade plus. Okay. Well, and it's a it's a very it's a very it's dynamic. It, it's interesting because we have we don't have individual line items for um, legal basically. Yep. So so typically. Point, um, if, if one of the boards need to talk to legal, they will talk to the town town administrators, you know, and seek permission to to, to use. You know, it's just so that the town administrator stays, you know, stays involved in that way. That's um, I would say we again would the, the town administrator is there to help the boards when they need. So so you're not going to get you're not going to get a. a Call from the school committees. You're not going to get a call um, from the board of health, typically, because but sometimes there's there's things that in that cross. But you may get a call from um, the board of health because they need to contact the building inspector. Um, the fire chief may talk to you because they're they're looking for a grant. They may need help writing a grant for for the fire department um the conservation commission or or the the zoning board um may want help with a schedule or uh, a 40b or so so the town the town administrator is like a conduit at that so to talk to the to the board of selectmen okay. or it's it, just being able to to listen and 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 again, to try to keep keep everyone going forward and march in the same same direction. Can I circle back to a question you asked earlier about you know the interaction of the board? Um, we've all read horror stories in the papers about individual members of an elected body that have a particular agenda, right? We've all, we've all and we all we all know those stories. Yes. I would I would suggest that it's been my experience that this board. Uh, is composed of people who may have different opinions and different approaches, but invariably when it gets to the town administrator and certainly to annual town meeting and big decisions uh, affecting the town has invariably come around to consensus on a common agenda. So you won't have the, you won't read about us in the newspaper, I guess is probably the best way to put that. <laughs> That's good. Yes. 
That's not to say we're in lockstep. On the contrary. Hmm? No, and, and we've said before, some, yeah. some, sometimes people say, well, your vote's always 3-0. They're like, well, not really. Um, but if you listen to our conversation, right. David may say something, I may say something totally different, Scott someplace where only Scott can be, and, field, but we, we, have a con <laughs> we have a conversation, <coughs> and when it's done, David's position has been probably modified. Well, we've, I think we've all changed. We've come in right. one way. And, 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 and so we, we kind of, we're not afraid. When, when, when something is said, um, we listen to one another. We, 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 we're not afraid to gather the information. Right. And we're also skilled enough to be able to um, state a contrarian point so that we can have a full discussion. And, and, I, and, I, and I, I, I think sometimes um, that's, if somebody asked me what the greatest thing about the board is, that would be it, is that we're not afraid to look at the total scope of a, a question, it, which we we may or may not even believe in that that point, but it's worth that discussion. It's a good mental exercise to force yourself out and think from a different you know standpoint. And yeah, <coughs> instead of being home and yeah watching TV, we, yeah, exactly. you know, we just we stretch ourselves mentally. <laughs> Well, and, and you had a good visual analogy because as we were talking earlier, you mentioned the funnel, and I'm sitting here thinking yeah, top of the funnel, about the bottom of the funnel. Anybody who spends time in Excel and databases, filters. That's always the that's the little icon symbol. Oh, yeah, yeah. is the funnel. There you go. You know, and that's that's one of the, the great roles of the town administrator is the filter and the conduit. I had a senior manager one time say, "Would you rather be in the Would you rather be the froth, or would you rather be the organized stream out the other end of the funnel?" I said, I don't know, sometimes it's good to be the froth. It is, yep. There's benefits to both. So so when you go back, an, an example would be, and Scott's heard, you heard Scott a couple of times talk about the select board of awesome. Um, we <laughs> Only a couple more weeks, size. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> and, and, and the reason, because we are by law, we were the Sunderland board of select men. So it didn't matter if man or woman, you were a select mm -hmm. man title. And that's universal. Yep. Yep. And and we had <clears throat> um, a couple residents come in and they say, why are you the board of select men? You're, you're, and we said, we never thought about that. That's because right. that's the way it is. <clears throat> and statue. and, and <coughs> I think two, two weeks later we voted, we voted to <clears throat> say, well, that's a good point. If, if, if it's just one person that don't think that they can become part of the governance of the community because of a title, it will change the name. It's not a, for us, it's an easy, yeah. easy choice. Um, but I think that kind of defines who we are. I mean, we hadn't thought about it. I mean, I hadn't thought about it. Um, just busy thinking about other things, that's all. No, and yeah, you know. Right. So, so, I mean, but that came from two people from our community that you know that that thought it was important, and, and you know what? When you when you think about it, it was Excuse a really important thing. Mm -hmm. Now we since learned <clears throat> that we don't have the authority to change our own name. No, Correct. We, don't. <laughs> we have to let the state house do it. We can't they just rebrand the bill, our own. and then it has to go to the state legislators, <clears throat> and then then after they. It's been adopted it. by town meeting this time. <coughs> That's, That's right. right. We have to do town Started meeting. Town meeting. But we went through. We went through those steps, and while we've been lingering in limbo, waiting for our official title, we decided, oh, what the heck? If it's going to be select board, at least let's improvise for a little bit. So, it's been the select board of awesome until the yeah. governor signs the bill. <coughs> Should have gone with that as an official. I, I, you know, it, <laughs> it would have been interesting to see the reaction. If you could change yeah. the name to anything, right? Well, we're, wait, we're waiting we're for waiting. FCAT to put in our our <laughs> intros. Like Roll those before credits the, before the meetings. <laughs> so, now Hadley does that. Yep, they have a very nice in, intro. 
We could, you know, know, Scott could be hanging off the side of a mountain. I could be running alongside a dog sled. Mm -hmm. Dave could be out at his smoker cooking some bacon. Just to get him some footage. Smoke tofu. (laughs) Smoke tofu. Smofu. (laughs) Smofu. All right, with some really good music to really. I bet you our. I bet you our viewership would go sky high. Mm -hmm. We could probably double. Probably so. Odds. She's working on it. I budget's know. tight. <laughs> I know, budget's tight. I'm going to wait Sarah, on the any, stove and start cooking during the meeting. Before we wander completely down the rabbit hole, any other questions? Anything come to mind? Obviously, now we've generated a fair amount of concern, and we're kind of sorry about that. But <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. It's, um, I, I think that's okay. I mean, you, did, you did ask about my preferred work environment. A sense of humor is absolutely critical. So I no issues there. I would agree with that. It's a key element of survival. And I think that's it at this point. Okay. Thank you, sir. Good to well, see you again. Thanks. Good to see you as well. Appreciate your time. And uh, again, thanks for, for coming down. As I said at the onset, we have one more interview on Thursday. We have a schedule, a regularly scheduled Monday meeting at, um, on, on the agenda. There's going to be some deliberation and possibly a decision, uh, at which point uh, we'll notify people immediately thereafter, like Tuesday, if, it come, if we can come to consensus. If not, it'd be just like, We'll be back at it. Yeah. All right. All right. Any motion. discussion? Motion. Uh, Is there a second? Second. There's been a motion made and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.